Kaura Internet. By the time you see this video, you've possibly already seen the quilt that I'm about to make. My quilt guild is about to have an exhibition, and I'm sure I'm going to make a video of that and probably get it up before I get this video up. And as part of that exhibition, there's a little bit of a challenge to make a mini quilt with the theme of Vivid. I've already got a glimmering of an idea. I'm just not quite sure exactly how I'm going to do it, but it's going to be fun finding out. The word vivid makes me think of a vivid marker which is a kind of a New Zealand version of a Sharpie. Specifically, it makes me think of that scribble that everyone does when they find an old pen in the bottom of a drawer and want to test if it's dried up. I've got all these brightly coloured two and a half inch strips left over from the Rainbow Room quilt, so I'm thinking I can use them to make some sort of background for the scribble. My first thought was to make a background out of wedge shapes using a Dresden template. But now that I see them laid out, I'm not so sure. I think that keeping the background simple might be better. So I'm just going to go back to straight stripes. Yeah, I like that much better. The easiest way to make the scribble is going to be raw edge applique, which means I need to redraw my scribble at a much larger scale. I think I might cut this out so I can try it against the background before I transfer it to the fabric. Yeah. I think that's about the right size. And with the black fabric, it looks even better. Before I quilt it though, let's go back to those wedges. I've been playing with them, and I love how this looks, but it's gonna end up way too big. But I've still got enough strips left to cut some much smaller wedges. Now that's got potential, but if I'm gonna make a circle, I might as well treat them as actual Dresden blades and finish the tops properly. Okay, that's looking good. Now I've just gotta decide what background to put it on feeling kind of drawn to the fabric with words. Yep, I like that one. And I need something to cover that hole in the middle. I could add a cat, but I think I'm going to stick with the literary theme. Yeah, that's going to look good. Okay, time to start quilting. For the scribble one, after sewing down the applique, I decided to go overboard on the background. I echoed around the squiggle, and then covered the rest of the quilt with improv quilting. Swirls and feathers and pebbles. Kind of as if someone had been doodling on the page after testing the pen. In fact, that's what I decided to call the quilt. Testing the pen. I went much simpler for the flower quilt. I stuffed a bit of extra batting under the centre for a tripunto effect. Then I secured down the Dresden and stitched in the ditch between the petals, continuing the lines out into the background. The black binding for testing the pen was a pretty easy choice. But I auditioned several fabrics for the flower one before I decided to stick with the literary theme and use another writing fabric for the binding, with a navy flange. The rainbow flower combined with the literary fabric gave me the title for this one, Mr Wilde's Buttonhole. And here they go, the two finished quilts. I think they're looking pretty good. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed following my design process through what ended up being two mini quilts for the challenge. If I manage to film the exhibition, which hopefully I will, I'll put a link to it up here. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Ka kite anō internet.